Welcome back. How was the exercise? Hopefully it wasn't too difficult. But if it was and you weren't able to finish it, don't worry. We're going to go over the steps. And luckily for you, once we do this, you'll have a template that you can use for all your websites. Because what we'll build will be something responsive that you can customize to your own liking. But you'll at least know the best practices after this video of how to do these common patterns that we see in a lot of websites. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do to convert this page is, well, a few things. Let's go to the HTML page first. And let's start off with the navigation. That is the header over here. A lot of websites have some sort of a header at the top. The first thing I want to do is to actually use semantic HTML and be more descriptive in what we are doing. So in our case, instead of div, I'm going to use the nav HTML element. And this is something that we've already talked about. And instead of just having header here, I'm going to have a UL class or UL element that will have a class name of main nav. And in here, we can just have li elements that will have an anchor tag. And because we don't really have, we won't have any links for this example, we can obviously do whatever new HTML page that we want to reference. But for now, we can just leave it blank. So the first one will, let's just say, be about. And we can copy and paste this for the other items as well. We'll have, let's just say, products. We'll say our team. And then finally, we'll have contacts. If I save this and refresh, there's our navigation. Doesn't look very good, does it? In real life, most of the time, we see the navigation at the top. And sometimes, we also see that there's navigation links at the top and one all the way to the right that's pushed to the right edge, such as contacts. So let's try and do that, where we have about products in our team at the top over here, and then contacts all the way to the right at the very edge. So for that, we can create a new class at the very last item that we want to, let's say, push. And we'll add these CSS classes. Now, if I go to, or let's save this first. If I go to style CSS, we can create our navigation here now. We have the main nav class, which we've created. And in here, we want to use Flexbox. So I'm going to say display flex to activate Flexbox. It sounds cool when I say activate Flexbox. I want to make sure I remove these little dots in front of the name. So I can just say list style none, which will remove these little pointers. And let's say that we want the font size to be, let's say, 0 0.7 em. If I save and refresh here, all right, things are a little bit better, but hmm, still not perfect. One is we want to remove any margins. So I'm going to say margin zero. If I refresh, all right, we've removed some margins, but still not pretty. We want to perhaps add some spaces in between these things. I'm going to just have the li class, which is our navigation items. And I'll just say that we want the padding to be 20 pixels. I refresh. That's a lot better. OK. And just to clean things up, let's say that our anchor tags, we also want them to be, well, to have a color of, let's just use F5, F5, F6. If I refresh, it's nice and whitish. That looks good. And we don't want those underlined, so I'm going to say text decoration, none. Refresh, all good. Now, because I want to start structuring this as a, an actual web page, I'm going to go to our zone class and just remove our padding and margin because we don't really need it. Refresh here. Things are start, going to start looking ugly, but at least we've moved all this white space. And then finally, our display, we're no longer going to use inline block. 
we want to start using our Flexbox or CSS grid. In our case, our main nav is going to have flex display. So we don't need our inline block anymore. I'm going to save and refresh. And that's a lot better. Because divs are automatically blocked, our displays for these bottom ones are now going to just be blocks. But our top one, our nav bar, has flex now, which is great. But you'll notice here we have a bit of a white gap. And this is very common when you're working with CSS. Sometimes browsers, by default, have some sort of CSS attached to them. In this case, in Google Chrome, our body element already has some predefined CSS classes that are pre-built by Chrome. So we can actually remove those and make sure that our margins are 0 by saying margin auto 0. And this is something, I'll oh, make sure I spell that right. This is something that you'll see a lot of. And you'll do a lot of when it comes to just making sure that the styles or at least the margins are correct when you start off. So if I refresh here, look at that. Margins are gone, and everything is filled on the page, which is great. The last thing I want to do is to move contacts all the way up to the right. And remember the push class that we added? Well, that's going to be super easy to do. All we need to do is to add a push CSS class that says margin left to be auto. And with this auto, if I refresh, contacts goes all the way to the right. If I inspect this element, so I just right click and click on inspect. And let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see. If I hover over li push here, we see that each li element has its own box. But because we did margin left auto, our li element, it's going to get automatically pushed because it has this automatic margin that it creates to the very end. If I did margin right, for example, and I refresh here, our margin would now actually be all the way to the right to fill up the entire width of the viewport. But let's go back to left. Oops. Let's go back to left, save, and refresh here. The neat part about this is that with this margin left auto, I can now resize our page, and you'll see that contacts is always going to be to our right. This is something that you'll see in a lot of websites, and we did that fairly fast. Not too bad, right? The last thing that I want to fix here is, as we'll notice, as we get closer and closer, it kind of overlaps our team. And well, now we have this weird little contacts that overflows. How can we fix this? Let's tackle that in the next video.